Gaius Plinius Caecilius Secundus, born Gaius Caecilius or Gaius Caecilius Silo, 61 c. 113, better known as Pliny the Younger, was a lawyer, author, and magistrate of ancient Rome. Pliny's uncle, Pliny the Elder, helped raise and educate him. Pliny the Younger wrote hundreds of letters, of which 247 survive and are of great historical value. Some are addressed to reigning emperors or to notables such as the historian Tacitus. Pliny served as an imperial magistrate under Trajan reigned 98-117, and his letters to Trajan provide one of the few surviving records of the relationship between the imperial office and provincial governors. Pliny rose through a series of civil and military offices, the cursus honorum. He was a friend of the historian Tacitus and might have employed the biographer Suetonius on his staff. Pliny also came into contact with other well known men of the period, including the philosophers Artemidorus and Euphrates the Stoic, during his time in Syria. <laughs> <laughs> Background Childhood <laughs> 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 Pliny the Younger was born in Novum Comum Como, northern Italy, around 61 AD, the son of Lucius Caecilius Silo, born there, and his wife Plinia Marcella, a sister of Pliny the Elder. He was the grandson of senator and landowner Gaius Caecilius, revered his uncle, Pliny the Elder who at this time was extremely famous around the Roman Empire, and provided sketches of how his uncle worked on the Naturalis Historia. Silo died at an early age, when Pliny was still young. As a result, the boy probably lived with his mother. His guardian and preceptor in charge of his education was Lucius Virginius Rufus, famed for quelling a revolt against Nero in 68 AD. After being first tutored at home, Pliny went to Rome for further education. There he was taught rhetoric by Quintilian, a great teacher and author, and Nicet Sacerdos of Smyrna. It was at this time that Pliny became closer to his uncle Pliny the Elder. When Pliny the Younger was 17 or 18, his uncle Pliny the Elder died attempting to rescue victims of the Vesuvius eruption, and the terms of the elder Pliny's will passed his estate to his nephew. In the same document the younger Pliny was adopted by his uncle. As a result, Pliny the Younger changed his name from Gaius Caecilius Silo to Gaius Plinius Caecilius Secundus his official title was Gaius Plinius Luci Filius Caecilius Secundus. There is some evidence that Pliny had a sibling. A memorial erected in Como now CILV, 5279, repeats the terms of a will by which the aedile Lucius Caecilius Silo, son of Lucius, established a fund, the interest of which was to buy oil used for soap for the baths of the people of Como. The trustees are apparently named in the inscription, L. Caecilius Valens and P. Caecilius Secundus, sons of Lucius, and the Contubernalis Lutula. The word contubernalis describing Lutula is the military term meaning tent mate, which can only mean that she was living with Lucius, not as his wife. The first man mentioned, L. Caecilius Valens, is probably the older son. Pliny the Younger confirms that he was a trustee for the largesse of my ancestors. It seems unknown to Pliny the Elder, so Valens' mother was probably not his sister Plinia, perhaps Valens was Lutula's son from an earlier relationship. Topic. Marriages Pliny the Younger married three times, firstly, when he was very young about 18, to a stepdaughter of Vecius Proculus, who died at age 37, secondly, at an unknown date, to the daughter of Pompeia Celerina, and thirdly to Calpurnia, daughter of Calpurnius and granddaughter of Calpurnius Fabatus of Comum. Letters survive in which Pliny recorded this last marriage taking place, his attachment to Calpurnia, and his sadness when she miscarried their child. Death Pliny is thought to have died suddenly during his convention in Bithynia Pontus, around 113 AD, since no events referred to in his letters date later than that. Career Pliny was by birth of equestrian rank, that is, a member of the aristocratic order of Aquites knights, the lower beneath the senatorial order of the two Roman aristocratic orders that monopolized senior civil and military offices during the early empire. His career began at the age of 18 and initially followed a normal equestrian route. But, unlike most equestrians, he achieved entry into the upper order by being elected quaestor in his late twenties. See career summary below. 
Pliny was active in the Roman legal system, especially in the sphere of the Roman centumviral court, which dealt with inheritance cases. Later, he was a well-known prosecutor and defender at the trials of a series of provincial governors, including Babius Massa, governor of Baetica, Marius Priscus, governor of Africa, Gaius Caecilius Classicus, governor of Baetica, and most ironically in light of his later appointment to this province, Gaius Julius Bassus and Varinus Rufus, both governors of Bithynia and Pontus. Pliny's career is commonly considered as a summary of the main Roman public charges and is the best documented example from this period, offering proof for many aspects aspects of imperial culture. Effectively, Pliny crossed all the principal fields of the organization of the early Roman Empire. It is an achievement for a man to have not only survived the reigns of several disparate emperors, especially the much detested Domitian, but also to have risen in rank throughout. Topic. Career summary Topic. Writings. Pliny penned his first work at age 14, a tragedy in Greek. Additionally, in the course of his life, he wrote numerous poems, most of which are lost. He was also known as a notable orator, though he professed himself a follower of Cicero's. Pliny's prose was more magniloquent and less direct than Cicero's. Pliny's only oration that now survives is the Panegyricus Traiani. This was delivered in the Senate in 100 and is a description of Trajan's figure and actions in an adulatory and emphatic form, especially contrasting him with the Emperor Domitian. It is, however, a relevant document that reveals many details about the Emperor's actions in several fields of his administrative power such as taxes, justice, military discipline, and commerce. Recalling the speech in one of his letters, Pliny shrewdly defines his own motives thus. I hoped in the first place to encourage our emperor in his virtues by a sincere tribute and, secondly, to show his successors what path to follow to win the same renown, not by offering instruction but by setting his example before them. To proffer advice on an emperor's duties might be a noble enterprise, but it would be a heavy responsibility verging on insolence, whereas to praise an excellent ruler optimum principem and thereby shine a beacon on the path posterity should follow would be equally effective without appearing presumptuous. Topic. Epistulae The largest surviving body of Pliny's work is his Epistulae letters, a series of personal missives directed to his friends and associates. These letters are a unique testimony of Roman administrative history and everyday life in the 1st century AD. Especially noteworthy among the letters are two in which he describes the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in August 79, during which his uncle Pliny the Elder died v. 20, and one in which he asks the emperor for instructions regarding official policy concerning Christians Epistulae by Topic. Epistles concerning the eruption of Mount Vesuvius Pliny wrote the two letters describing the eruption of Mount Vesuvius approximately 25 years after the event, and both were sent in response to the request of his friend, the historian Tacitus, who wanted to know more about Pliny the Elder's death. The two letters have great historical value due to their accurate description of Vesuvius' eruption. Pliny's attention to detail in the letters about Vesuvius is so keen that modern volcanologists describe those types of eruptions as Plinian eruptions. Topic. Epistle concerning the Christian religion As the Roman governor of Bithynia Pontus now in modern Turkey, Pliny wrote a letter to Emperor Trajan around 112 AD and asked for counsel on dealing with Christians. In the letter Epistulae by .96, Pliny detailed an account of how he conducted trials of suspected Christians who appeared before him as a result of anonymous accusations and asked for the emperor's guidance on how they should be treated. Pliny had never performed a legal investigation of Christians and thus consulted Trajan in order to be on solid ground regarding his actions. Pliny saved his letters and Trajan's replies and these are the earliest surviving Roman documents to refer to early Christians. Trajan's response to Pliny makes it clear that being a Christian was sufficient for punishment, but Christians were not to be tracked down and anonymous denunciations were to be ignored. The correspondence between Pliny and Emperor Trajan shows that the Roman Empire, as a government entity, did not at this time seek out Christians for prosecution or persecution. Manuscripts 
In France Giovanni Giocondo discovered a manuscript of Pliny the Younger's letters containing his correspondence with Trajan. He published it in Paris dedicating the work to Louis XII. Two Italian editions of Pliny's epistles were published by Giocondo, one printed in Bologna in 1498 and one from the press of Aldus Minucius in 1508. Villas Pliny loved villas. Being wealthy, he owned many, such as the one in Lake Como named Tragedy, because of its location high on a hill. Another, on the shore of the lake, was named Comedy, because it was sited low down. Pliny's main estate in Italy was in the north of Umbria, under the passes of Bocca Trabaria and Bocca Seriola, where wood was harvested for Roman ships and sent to Rome via the Tiber. See also Herculaneum Misnum Pompeii Stabiae References Further reading Bell, Albert A. A Note on Revision and Authenticity in Pliny's Letters. American Journal of Philology. 110 3, 460–466. doi, 10.2307, Bell, Albert A. 2002. All Roads Lead to Murder, A Case from the Notebooks of Pliny the Younger. High Country Publishers. ISBN 978-0-9713045-3-6. Dobson, E. S. Pliny the Younger's Depiction of Women. Classical Bulletin. 58-81-85. Simon Hornblower and Anthony Spofforth, ed. 2003 Oxford Classical Dictionary 3rd ed. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-860641-9. Raddus, Betty 1963. The Letters of the Younger Pliny. London, Penguin Classics. ISBN 978-0-14-044127-7. Raddus, Betty 1968. Pliny and the Panegyricus. Greece and Rome, 15 to 166-172. doi, 10.1017, SO 0173835000175140. JSTOR 642428. Sands, John Edwin 1911. Pliny the Younger. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopædia Britannica. 21 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 844-846. Sherwin-White, A. N. 1966. The Letters of Pliny, A Social and Historical Commentary. Oxford, Clarendon Press. ISBN 0-19-814435-0. Sherwin-White, A. N. 1969. Pliny, The Man and His Letters. Greece and Rome. Cambridge University Press, 16 76-90. doi, 10.1017, JSTOR 642902. Stadler, Chiago David 2013. O Imperio Romano M. Cartas, Glorias Romanas M. Papel e Tinta, Plinio, O Jovem e Trajano 98 d. c. Curitiba, Jurua Editora. Stout, Salati Edgar 1962. Plinius, Epistulae, a critical edition. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. Syme, Ronald 1968. People in Pliny. Journal of Roman Studies. Society for the Promotion of Roman Studies. 58 1 and 2, 135-151. doi, 299703 JSTOR 299703. Wilkin, Robert L. 1984. Pliny, A Roman Gentleman, In the Christians as the Romans Saw Them. New Haven, Connecticut, Yale University Press. 
Topic external links Media related to Plinius Minor at Wikimedia Commons Quotations related to Pliny the Younger at Wikiquote Works written by or about Pliny the Younger at Wikisource Works by Pliny the Younger at Perseus Digital Library Works by Pliny the Younger at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Pliny the Younger at Internet Archive Works by Pliny the Younger at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Letters of Pliny the Younger – Translation at Atlas.org in English The Younger Pliny's Works at the Latin Library in Latin detailed biography at Livius.org